Hi, I'm Warren Sprouse. This is the Bible Forum. You're here with me every Sunday night from 8 to 10 p.m. We just talk about life from a biblical perspective. It's just you and me. There's nobody else around. Tonight I wanted to tell you a sad story. Uh, Jan Crouch of TVN fame has succumbed to a massive stroke. Uh, she died as a result of complications uh, on May 31st. Uh, she was 78 years old. Uh, her husband, uh, Paul Crouch, uh, together were founders of TBN. Uh, he passed away two and a half years earlier. The Christian Examiner notes that Crouch and her husband were known for being part of the prosperity gospel movement. And while this is what the online Christian news satire group called Babylon B uh, has said in response, it has met with rejection. Uh, people are not happy that they've said this about Jan Crouch. But what they said was various baffled prosperity gospel preachers have begun offering theories Tuesday on how Crouch could possibly have passed away, given her overabundance of faith, her supernatural ability to name and claim health and wealth at will, and her decades of collecting donations while promising that God's will is for everybody to be wealthy and healthy. Folks think that this is a little bit over the top. The article also included fake quotes from popular prosperity gospel preachers like Joel Osteen and Kenneth Copeland and Benny Hinn. Many fans admitted they usually enjoyed the satire, but this one went too far. They don't think it's funny or it's appropriate. They didn't like the timing of it and so forth. But at the end of their reporting on her death, the CNN website said, quote, but TBN was not without controversy. The New York Times article documented a family fight that highlighted the lavish lifestyle of the Crouches, including matching multi-million dollar homes in a gated community in Newport, California. In 2015, Courthouse News Service noted that Various members of the Crouch family have sued each other over the years. That was apparently okay. It's a touchy subject. But I wonder if Christians should respect the feelings of a family grieving the loss of a loved one? Absolutely. Should Christians warn people of spiritual error, especially that which is cloaked in Christian terminology and spiritual practice? Absolutely. I think the Babylon Bee could have waited, don't you? CNN didn't have to add their little caveat, did they? But given all of that, what did either of them say that wasn't true? CNN's not a whole lot better than TBN, and they didn't go after TBN for their name it and claim it and their uh, you know, everybody, God wants everybody well kind of thing, because they believe it too. But they wanted folks to know that they disagreed with the excesses of TBN. But the Babylon Bee does something very important. It provides a needed service. And that service, couched in comedy so-called, is a warning an urgent service given the spiritual malaise that dominates organized Christianity today. Most true Christians have their head in the sand. Most true Christians do not know what's going on. Most true Christians don't even want to. Most true Christians are shocked when they hear about these errors. But how do you pray if you don't know what's going on? How do you protect your family if you accept everything and reject nothing? How do you honor God if you pray for or ignore heretics and con artists as though they're sincere Christian leaders? 
The Bible stands four square on a principle that's not listed in the Bible, but it's true. And that principle has to do with whether or not a person is a true Christian. If a person says that they are a Christian, but they don't speak Christian doctrine, they don't follow what the Bible says about it, but rather create their own. In the old days, we used to say, pretty is as pretty does. In Christianity, it's the same thing. Christian is as Christian does. There is no way to tell who's a Christian except by the way they live and by how they speak and by what they do. Their morality and their values tell you whether they're Christian. And when they go into the Bible and deliberately lift things out, change the meaning and push it back at you with something absolutely silly and become multimillionaires in the process, telling you that God wants you well, that sickness is a matter of sin, and if you will just repent of your sin, you will not be sick, and then to die of a heart attack? To die of cancer? To die of a stroke? What kind of God is that? And trust me, nobody's ever got out of here alive. They all get sick. They all die. And there's a living testimony that what they have been teaching and preaching is not true. People need to hear that. The newspaper could have waited. Wouldn't have hurt. But they dare not be silent. Souls and lives are at stake. Error, when it is spiritual, is not just merely wrong or different. It is deadly at the eternal level. We often say when someone passes away, may they rest in peace. And we trust and hope that she will. But given the part we do know, I don't think so.